15 examples of animals working together. Number 15, beluga whale and seagull. In September of 2019, a Norwegian local was out on his boat in Hammerfest Harbor when he noticed something unusual happening. There was a seagull on the surface of the water and a beluga whale was hovering underneath. To begin with, he was expecting the whale to try and swallow the bird, but instead, it came up and tried to make contact with it. The bird is startled and drops the fish it was carrying, but the whale doesn't go after the food and instead is more intent on trying to be friends with its new acquaintance. They played for a few minutes before going on their way, and it's a great piece of evidence to show that different species will often try and interact with each other in a friendly way in the wild. Number 14, Badger and Coyote. Animal organizations have remote cameras set up wherever they can, and sometimes the footage they capture is unbelievable. Here, the camera is looking at a tunnel beneath a highway in California's Santa Cruz Mountains, and there's a coyote that's planning on going through. It seems to be waiting for something, though. And just as you begin to expect it might be another coyote, into view comes a badger. The two species have long been known to work together to hunt small mammals, but this had previously been assumed to be a case where they took advantage of each other's talents. This footage, though, proves they can become good friends and will travel long distances together. Number 13, Manta Ray and Remora. If you've ever seen a manta ray or shark swimming in the ocean, the chances are that there was a remora fish attached to them. At first, it's strange seeing the larger animals not trying to eat the smaller ones, but that's because they formed an important symbiotic relationship. The remoras want to feel safe, and very few things will attack them when they're beside a manta ray. It's an easier way for them to travel, and they also get to eat small organisms that are on their hosts. The rays and sharks, on the other hand, are quite happy with the presence of the remora because they can help to remove other hitchhikers and keep them clean. Number 12, water buffalo and cattle egrets. Cattle egrets are the small white birds that you'll often see set on the backs of water buffalo and other similar animals like cows and oxen. But rather than simply using the creatures as a place to rest, they are actually working together to make each other's lives easier. The buffalo provide protection for the birds and make it very difficult for any predators to approach to attack them. While the egrets are taking care of one of the most annoying things in a buffalo's world, bugs. Grasshoppers are stirred up by their hooves and insects bite and scratch their skin. They're way too big to be able to do anything about it, but the egrets are quick and nimble and love to eat the pests. Number 11, carrion beetles and mites. Carrion beetles trawl the land to find the carcasses of recently deceased animals to feed on and lay their larvae within. But they face competition from several other species that try to do the same. Flies are the main problem, and their maggots eat the same food that the beetle larvae do, often leaving them without much to survive on. Luckily, carrion beetles have a secret weapon, mites. They walk around almost covered in them, but when they reach a new food source, the mites will crawl off them and begin to eat all of the fly eggs and maggots. This creates the perfect place for carrion beetles to leave their larvae without any competitions, and then they and their mites can travel to the next place. Number 10, zebras and ostriches. One of the most amazing instances of animals working together in the wild are zebras and ostriches. They'll quite often group together on the savanna and are often housed together in zoos. But this just isn't because they don't pose a threat to each other. There's a much cleverer plan in action, and it's all to do with safety. Both species are preyed upon by the same predators, but zebras have particularly poor eyesight. And ostriches have a terrible sense of smell and hearing. This means that when they're together, ostriches keep a watch out, and zebras listen and smell. And if either get any indication that danger is approaching, they'll warn the other. It's a perfect example of an animal allying itself with another that has a different skill set. And they're commonly mentioned in corporate training sessions to show how businesses can benefit from the same approach. Number nine, dog rescues cat. Dogs and cats are notorious enemies towards one another, but this isn't always the case. Sometimes they can become best of friends. And in 2017, a video from Canada was circulated that shows this in action. The cat has managed to get its head stuck inside a plastic cup and has begun to panic because it can't remove it. It twists and struggles to try to free itself, but to no avail. The dog soon comes over to the rescue, though, and calmly grabs the cup with its teeth and pulls it free from the cat. 
The cat's visibly relieved and the two walk off together to explore the yard. This of course isn't the first time that the two species have worked together and especially if they're raised in the same home, this kind of relationship is actually quite common. Number 8. Tarantulas and Frogs You might think that tarantulas will happily prey upon anything that they can grab a hold of. But in some regions across the world such as Peru, India, Sri Lanka, and Texas, they have a surprising alliance with frogs. It's not uncommon to see the two species living in the same burrow, and at first researchers were baffled as to why this might be. When they observed their behavior further, however, they discovered that this was a mutually beneficial situation. Frogs are eaten by a variety of creatures such as snakes, but these are unlikely to want to venture anywhere near to a tarantula. The remains of a tarantula meal also attract small insects that the frog likes to eat, so they do very well out of the arrangement. One of the biggest threats that tarantulas face, on the other hand, are certain species of ants that feed upon their eggs. The frogs eat these ants and therefore provide protection for the spiderlings as they develop, meaning the burrow is a safe space for them. Number 7. Honey Badger and Honey Guides as their name would suggest, honey badgers love to eat honey, but sometimes struggle to find a beehive. And honey guides are very good at finding hives, but are unable to break into them. This has led to the development of a unique collaboration whereby they help each other out. When they've spotted a perfect source of honey, the honey guide bird will go and signal to a honey badger where it is. The badger can then climb to wherever the bee's nest is and knock it to the ground with its large claws, and then break it open to reveal the honey inside. It will take its share first, but always make sure to leave some behind so that the honey guide can swoop in and get some for itself too. This form of mutualistic symbiosis makes the search for food far more efficient for both of them, and is amazing to watch in action. Number 6. Pistol Shrimp and Gobies Pistol shrimp are some of the fastest moving and powerful animals on the planet for their size, and can strike with such ferocity that they create a sound similar to a gunshot, and can even vaporize the water in front of them. They do have a problem though, and that's that they have very poor eyesight. They aren't able to see any predators approaching, so enlist the help of the goby fish. The shrimp creates a burrow where both animals live, but when they're on the surface looking for food, the fish hover above them and keep in contact with their tail. The moment the goby spots a predator, it flicks its tail and the shrimp retreats to its burrow. And while they're hunting, the shrimp's powerful punch can incapacitate plenty of food to feed the both of them. It's amazing how integrated their behaviors are considering they aren't related to each other, but together they're one of the most effective teams in the ocean. Number 5. Warthogs and Mongooses Thanks to the Lion King, you might have presumed a warthog's best friend in nature is a meerkat but it might be more accurate to say it's a mongoose. The two species are often seen together in the wild, and in the Queen Elizabeth National Park in Uganda, the arrangement is almost comical. When a warthog is becoming particularly annoyed by the ticks that are biting at them, they'll seek out a mongoose, and it might even enlist the help of a whole group of them. The warthog lies down and the mongoose get to work, scurrying its body for every last tick. The insects are one of their favorite meals, and this is why the behavior has developed. It's an example of mutual symbiosis where mongooses are providing a service for the warthogs by removing the irritation, and the warthogs are providing the mongooses with food. Sometimes it almost seems as if the mongooses are organized into a cleaning crew waiting for their next customer to arrive, and queues of warthogs have been seen waiting for their turn to be cleansed. This behavior has been seen across Africa in conservation parks, and is thought to be quite common throughout. Meerkats have also been seen doing the same thing for warthogs, though, so don't be too disillusioned by Timon and Pumbaa. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe to Top 5s with notifications on. Number 4. Sea Anemones and Hermit Crabs Hermit crabs are well known for the way that, instead of growing their own shells, they will cast theirs aside when they grow too big for it and will find something in the ocean to replace it with. Some species don't choose to go it alone, however, and have been found to work very closely with sea anemones. The bond starts when they're both very young, and the crabs will pick up an anemone and stick to its shell. Even when they change shell, they've been seen to move the anemone to their new home, which shows how important they see this relationship to be. Both of them benefit a great deal, 
Anemones are usually stuck in one place on the ocean floor, but by doing this, they are able to move around and find more food sources. They can also take advantage of food particles floating in the water that have been released when the crab eats. In return for this, they provide the crabs with protection. Somehow, the two communicate with each other, although this process isn't fully understood. And when a danger approaches, the anemone spreads its stinging threads and tentacles across the shell like a curtain. Hermit crabs with an anemone are far less to be eaten by large fish than those without. And so by working together, they're able to live much longer lives. Number three, ants and caterpillars. To many animals, a caterpillar looks like a juicy lump of meat that's ripe for the picking. And while some have developed sophisticated defense measures like spikes or poison to protect themselves, there are others that team up with ants to keep them safe. This behavior is seen with lichenid caterpillars, who have to contend with aggressive ant species and birds while they're trying to collect enough nutrients before they can build a cocoon. Their special weapon is that they secrete a sweet liquid across their whole body, and this attracts a species of friendly ant. It's thought that as well as being tasty, these secretions contain chemical appeasement signals to make the ants more docile, and they see the caterpillar as something not to attack, and they'll do their best to defend it at all costs. If, for example, another species of ant tries to swarm and eat the caterpillar, these friendly ants will fight them off. The ants that cover the caterpillar's body also change the way it looks, so it's less appetizing to large animals, and don't taste very nice to birds, so they'll avoid them at all costs. Similar arrangements can be seen with caterpillars and ants across the world, and it works out to be very beneficial to both. Number 2. Ravens and Wolves At first, you might not think that ravens and wolves had enough in common to regularly work together, but the more you see about their behaviors, the more it makes total sense. There's no doubt that wolves are incredibly effective predators, so much so that the U.S. government introduced a bounty program to encourage people to hunt them by the 1930s, only a few hundred of them remained. Having now been granted conservation status, they're returning to the wild, and their close relationship with ravens is becoming even more clear. So perfectly matched are the two species that they're having a major effect on ecosystems, and are helping to limit population numbers of other animals that were beginning to uncontrollably increase due to the lack of any natural predators. You'll often see a raven scavenging at the carcass of a meal that a wolf is just fed on. And while this may seem opportunistic, this is far from being a coincidence. In Yellowstone Park, observations have found that an average of 30 of the birds show up in the wake of a wolf attack. And while some have probably been perched in the trees, keeping a keen eye out for the perfect time to join the meal, others take a much more active role in things. This is a two-way relationship, as ravens have also been seen to stalk potential prey and, when the time's right, signal to a nearby wolf when a perfect meal is waiting. Because of their ability to fly up high and their superior eyesight, the ravens are able to spot a suitable target far easier than the wolf can from ground level. And together, they're far more successful at finding food than if they were doing it all by themselves. After pointing out to the wolf where it needs to go, the ravens sit back and let them do all of the hard work and reap the rewards afterwards. It's a great example of animals playing to their strengths and behaving in a mutually beneficial way. In a further surprising twist, wolves and ravens are known to play with each other in between hunts. Ravens may dive at the wolves before quickly flying away, peck at their tails and get them to chase them, and may themselves be pranked by wolf cubs who playfully chase after them. Number 1. Decorator Crabs and Sponges Decorator crabs, which are also sometimes known as sponge crabs, aren't content with their own defensive armor, so spend their lives trying to cover their heads and bodies with sponges. Some have hooked hairs over themselves that keep the sponges in place, while others hold them with their rear legs. But whatever attachment method they use, it's highly effective. Amazingly, they'll also mold the sponge around their body for a snug fit, and will keep adding new ones as they grow. The sponge helps them to camouflage against the seafloor, so would-be predators aren't aware that they're there. Some sponges release toxic chemicals and signals that further deter any danger. The sponges don't mind this either because it's a great way for them to travel around and take advantage of new sources of food as they filter the water they pass through. Subscribe to Top 5s for more and check out some of our other popular videos.